Good afternoon and welcome to Onalaska, Wisconsin for a rematch of Monday's baseball game. Glad to be able to bring you audio for this one as we only had video for Monday's game. It's the Central River Hawks, one and one overall, one and one in the conference as well. Lost to Onalaska 14 to six on Monday. Looking for a little revenge here today at Onalaska. Onalaska's 1-0. That was their first game of the year on Monday. They're 1-0 overall and 1-0 in the conference. Very windy day here, wind blowing in. And so I don't think we're going to see any home runs today as that would take quite a mighty swing to get it even really to halfway to the outfield as the wind really whipping and you can probably hear it on the mic. Got to thank Onalaska for allowing us into the press box. We don't get to do that very often on the road. And so we are in the press box. I was hoping it'd be a little guarded from the wind, but instead the wind is blowing right in on us. And so we do have uh, some wind in the mic. I apologize for that. And it looks like we're getting ready for the national anthem here. And the starting lineups, it looks like. So a little bit of... This is the first home game for Onalaska, so they're getting the kinks worked out. But yeah, very nice to be inside the press box. Got a good view of the game today. A little different than being out in center field, up on a table trying to get over the fence. <laughs> and you could probably hear the PA, so I'll just turn it over to TJ Mitchell, who's our PA announcer today. Central River Hawks are coached by Garrett Grosch. Uh, batting first in the lineup, number 13, Zach George at second base. Batting second in the lineup, number 11, Jude Alvarado at catcher. Batting third, number 10, Grayson Vienendahl, DHing. Batting fourth, Eric Ramsier, pitching. Number five, batting fifth, number six, Landon Smith, left field. Batting sixth, number 12, Aiden Schultz, third base. Batting seventh, number seven, Dawson Lappick at shortstop. Batting eighth, number 14, Luke Hansen at first. Batting ninth, number two, Derek Mangier at center. And playing uh, right field, number four, Garrett Vandezan. And now, there's the starting lineup for the Riverhawks. Hawks. Here come the Hilltoppers. Coached by Brock Knapp. Batting first, number three, Xavier Lawrence in left field. Batting second, number 11, Carter Gilhausen at center. Number, batting third, number six, Hayden Kokeisel at second base. Batting fourth, number 24, Caden Brezina at third. Batting fifth, number two, Brady Coon at catcher. Batting sixth, number five, Brody Mitchell at first base. Batting seventh, number 14, Carson Zinniger, DH. Number eight, number six, uh, batting eight, number 16, Ian Cole in right field. And batting ninth, number 13, Landon Hubert at shortstop. And on the mound for tonight, starting at pitcher, number 23, Owen Trainer. And there's the Onalaska starting lineup as we get set here for the national anthem. Please stand, remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem.
Starting lineups are red, and the National Anthem is played, and we're about ready for some WIA Mississippi Valley Conference baseball. Third conference game of the year for the Riverhawks. Defeated Sparta in their opener on the road at Sparta. Lost on Alaska. 14-6 was the final. Remember that game? It was down to 8-6 to going into the seventh as the Riverhawks tried to rally. And on Alaska, able to put a big crooked number up on the board in the top of the seventh. Owen Trainer, the pitcher for on Alaska, he's the guy that came in at the end of that game against the River Hawks on Monday. I think he just pitched one inning. I could be wrong. I'm trying to look and see. I don't keep very good pitching stats, so I'm not sure about that. But the River Hawks did go one, two, three in the ninth. So if it was Trainer that came in, he made quick work of the River Hawks in that bottom of the seventh inning. Of course, all the energy and excitement was gone after giving up, what was it, six runs in the top of the seventh inning. So hard to bounce back after that. See if the River Hawks have better luck here today. Of course, on the road, they'll be batting first, so first chance to get on the board. And you know Coach, Coach Grush would love that as we get a chance to see Coach Grush. I don't know if you can pick him up on the camera, but he's right in front of us as we're up here in the press box. I'm Nami George. I'll be on play-by-play -play today. I got Anissa George here, our producer. Ray George, our cameraman. Cameraman. There we go. So the usual crew as trainer finishes with warm-up pitches. Catcher will send it down to second. And we're about ready to go here from on Alaska at the on Alaska Legion Field. Nice field, nice press box. Zach George will lead off the second baseman for the River Hawks, batting 333 on the year. Was one for four on Monday. Trainer, the lefty, sets and delivers. George watches one inside for ball one. Hope you saw on the during the national anthem that flag gets really whipping in towards home plate. Gonna want to hit stuff hard on the ground today. Trainer's pitch. Swung on, driven to right center. Hung up just enough for the center fielder to get over and make the catch. George retired on the F8. Got a good swing on it. A little too much air underneath it, and Carter Gilhausen with his speed made easy work of that. And that will bring up the catcher, Jude Alvarado. Alvarado batting 286 so far on the young year. One away here, top of the first inning. Trainer delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Looked like an off-speed pitch. And Alvarado is behind 0-1. Trainer sets and delivers. This one on the outside for a ball, 1-1. One one. This is a count one out here, top of the first inning, just underway from on Alaska. Trainer delivers. This one is high. 2-1 now the count. Alvarado has some pop in his bat, but I don't think today he's going to be able to power one out, even as mighty as his swing is. This one a hard ground ball to short, and it's going to get over the glove of the shortstop, and that'll be a base hit for Jude Alvarado. Landon Hubert tried to backhand that and took a hop right at the last second right over his glove. Would have taken a great play to get that out anyway. So a single for Jude Alvarado, and the Riverhawks have a runner aboard here in the first inning. Brings up Grayson Vienendahl, the DH. Batting 167, of course, that's a very small sample size. So you got to remember that with all of these numbers that I'm giving you today. Literally two games into the season, so... Vienendahl with a lot of pop in his bat, too. The pitch is low, and Vienendahl ahead in the count now, 2-0. -oh. See if he can get something to drive here. Alvarado on first. The pitch. This one's low, gets past the catcher, and that'll allow Alvarado 
to get to second base. So a pass ball gets Alvarado over to second. Also runs the count to three and zero. Oh. Riverhawks would love to score here in the top of the inning. Set the tone early for this game. Trainer with the pitch. This one is high, and Fienendahl takes a four-pitch walk. And the Riverhawks have runners on first and second. Brings up Eric Ramsier. Ramsier, 333 on the year. Had a good game on Monday. Yeah, had two hits on Monday. See if he can keep that up. Here's a pitch. It's a grounder. It's going to be a tough play to third. Ramsier running down the line. The throw is in the dirt, but a great scoop over at first base. Gets Ramsier. Runners to advance. Ramsier out on the 5 3. And that was a heck of a scoop over there by, I believe that's Brody Mitchell. And it is. Brody Mitchell with a nice backhand pick. And so the Riverhawks, second and third now with two away, and that'll bring up Landon Smith. Landon Smith batting 375 on the year. Trainer with the pitch. This one is high. Lower ball one. How about a base hit here? Take a quick lead. Trainer sets, delivers. Swung on and fouled pretty much off a of home plate and back to the Backstop, evens the count at ones. It's a great play by the third baseman, too. He had to charge it. That was not an easy play. Third baseman is Caden Kolkheisel for... Is it Caden Kolkheisel? It is. No, it's not. It's Caden Perzina. There we go. Perzina really had to charge that. As Smith, ta Smith takes another ball, two and one the count. Trainer of the pitch. This one is high, three and one. Now a big spot here for the Rivox early on. A hitter's count, three one with runners on second and third. Two away here, just underway. Trainer, the pitch. This one is low, and that'll walk the bases loaded. As Landon Smith. Able to get aboard via the walk, and that'll bring up Aiden Schulze. Schulze batting 111 on the year, the sophomore, playing third base today. Trainer the pitch. Ground ball, third base, nice play there. Bobbled the ball, though. Now going to have to throw it across the diamond and just throws out Schulze. Nice play by Pierzino there to stick with it as it came out of his glove. He had to recover and then had the arm strength to get it over. Riverhawks threatening in the top of the first inning. One hit, two walks, no errors. They do leave three runners on, and that's not what you want if you're the Riverhawks with Onalaska coming up to bat. We're going to go to our donation spots. We're going to try and hit ads every half inning so we can get the sponsors some more play here today. So we'll go... Uh, donation sponsors, and then we'll be back with the defensive lineup for the Riverhawks. Welcome back to Onalaska. As we get set for the bottom of the first inning, we'll set you the lineup for the defense for the Riverhawks. It'll be Eric Ramsier on the mound, 1-0 and this year. He got the win up at Sparta. 2.33 ERA, only allowed two earned runs, four strikeouts and two walks at Sparta in his first appearance of the year. Jude Alvarado is the catcher today. Luke Hansen at first base, Zach George at second base. Aiden Schulze is at third base. Dawson Lappick playing short. 
and your outfield from left to right. Landon Smith in left, Derek Pangier in center, and Garrett Van de Zand in right. Van de Zand, the player that is being DH for by Grayson Vienendahl. Hilltoppers will start their top of the or bottom of the first inning with left fielder Xavier Lawrence, center fielder Carter Gilhausen, and second baseman Caden Kokeisel. Lots of speed in the top of the order for the Hilltoppers. So Riverhawks will want to try and keep them off the base paths the best they can. Batting, Not have to deal with that. Three, Xavier, Lawrence. Xavier Lawrence, left fielder. Was three for five on Monday. Three hit game for him. And so he can do some damage at the plate. We'll see how Ramsier deals with him. Ramsier the pitch. This one is inside for ball one. One and all the count to Lawrence. Lawrence, a senior. I was looking down. Did he swing or watch? He watched one, so it's one and one. Saw it was a strike. Didn't know how it happened. Rams here the pitch. This one is inside for two and one. Maybe I should keep my head down. That was the only strike we've seen. Senior heavy team for these Hilltoppers. Rams here the pitch. This one swung on. Hit up the middle, and that'll be a base hit for Xavier Lawrence. So he's off to a hot start this season. His fourth hit on the year. And the Hilltoppers now have a runner aboard here in the first inning. Bring up senior center fielder Carter Gilhausen. Gilhausen was two for three on Monday. Top three batters in their order, all seniors. Top four batters. Might be more, I haven't gone there. And there is that speed on display and this throw from Alvarado is gonna go into the outfield. Pangier did a good job to back it up. That'll keep Lawrence at second base, but you saw the speed on display. We talked about that. They can run. They get on base. They become dangerous. The pitch was a strike, and so it's 0-1 to Gilhausen. Gilhausen, another one with speed. Pitch he is low for a ball. One and one the count. Runner in scoring position here for Alaska. Nobody out. So it's actually the top six batters in their order. All seniors for the Hilltoppers. Quite the contrast to the Riverhawks, who are a young team this year. This one is low for a ball. Two and one now the count. Seven of the nine in the starting lineup for the Hilltoppers are seniors. The pitch, swung on, ground ball, second base. George knocks it down, has to throw fast to get Gilhausen, and he did not get him. Gilhausen able to beat it out, and that's speed again. George was kept it in front of him, was not able to field it cleanly. And I would assume that will have to be an error on Zach George. As if he feels that clean it is. If he feels that clean, he's going to be able to throw him out. Was not able to pick it clean off the dirt. And just that little bit of a bobble was enough to let Gilhausen get down the line far enough to beat out the throw. First and third now. Ramsier finding himself in a little bit of a jam early on. Able to fire in a strike on Kolkheisel. Kolkheisel was two for four on Monday. Oh, won the count. Well, you, be, you hit a hard ground ball a second, and you can beat the throw. That's pretty impressive. This one's in there for a strike. Rams ear quickly ahead of Cole Keisel, 2 and 0, 0 and 2, excuse me. Love a strike out here. Give you some light at the end of the tunnel. 
Zier shaking off Alvarado's signs. Now finds one they agree on. The pitch. Gilhausen takes off and goes. Ground ball to short. The only play is going to be at first. Lapic fields. Throws to first, and it's low. It's going to get by Hanson at first. And everybody's going to be safe. A run is going to score. Lawrence comes around to score. And that's going to be another air on the Riverhawks. Not the way that they wanted to start out this game. E6 on the play as Lapik's throw was in the dirt, and now that brings up Caden Pierzina with runners on second and third. Still nobody out. Already 1-0 in favor of the Hilltoppers. Ramsey the pitch. This one just a bit low. 1-0. Riverhawks need an out. Any out. Ramsier sets and delivers. Swung on. That's going to be a drive to right field. That's going to score at least one. Throw comes in. They'll hold the runner, the runner at third. And so an RBI single for Caden Pierzina. And it's two to nothing in favor of the Hilltoppers. Still nobody out. Two hits, two errors so far for the Hilltoppers. Brings up senior catcher Brady Kuhn. Kuhn was 0 for 4 on Monday. First and third, nobody out. Let's see if the Hilltoppers put Pierzina in motion here in a first and third. He stays for now. This is a ground ball foul down the third baseline. Ramsey had 0 and 1. Nightmarish start here for the Riverhawks. Bases loaded in the top of the first inning and can't score. And then start the game with two errors and two singles. Find yourself down early and in lots of trouble here in the first inning. Ramsey with the pitch. Swung on and missed. 0 2 now to Kuhn. Kuhn looking around. I think he thought that was a hit and run. And it was because I just saw their coach look over at Pierzina with his hands up saying, what are we doing here? Obviously a missed sign. Cost Kuhn a strike. Ramsey with the pitch. Just off the outside corner. And one and two now. Close pitch. Good pitch with 0-2. Want to work the corners a little bit. Make them fish for something. Ramsey sets and delivers. That one is in there for a strike on the off-speed pitch. And what a big first out that is. Needed that in the worst way. That'll bring up Brody Mitchell. Two for four on Monday, two doubles. Hit the ball hard pretty much all day long in an RBI situation. Runners on first and third, one out. Ramsey sets. Delivers. This one is swung on. It's a grounder back to the pitcher. He'll go to first. Ramsier. Now they'll throw home. Throw a relay throw to home is not in time. So an RBI sink. Uh, excuse me. An RBI ground out for Brody Mitchell. Central gladly will take the out given the situation. Two outs now. RBI for Mitchell on the one three put out, and that brings up Carson Zinnaker. The DH today, he was 0 for 2 on Monday. Two outs with a runner on second. Central needs to limit the damage here. Ramsier, the pitch is in there for a strike. Ramsier doing a good job getting ahead of the batters. And he's induced, you know, two of the people that have been on were ground balls. That's all you can do as a pitcher. Got to trust your defense behind you. Ramsey or the pitch. Low for ball one. One and one. Wonder if Ramsey would have looked over at the runner on third if that would have frozen him enough to be able to get that relay throw home, but you don't want to take a chance. You need an out in this situation, so he can't fault him for that. This one off the outside corner for a ball, two and one. No softball game tomorrow. We had 
told you there was a softball game. I guess that got moved. So there is no softball game tomorrow. So we will be off the air tomorrow except for here's Ramsey with the pitch. Ground ball to shortstop. Lapic has it, throws to first, throw is in time, and that will end the inning on the 6-3 put out for Zinnaker. Except for, before we end this thought and go to commercial, noon tomorrow, a major breaking news announcement. Live on the Central YouTube channel. You're not going to want to miss it. Make sure you tune in. Set your alarm. Set your alarm on your phone so you don't forget. Noon tomorrow, we will be live on the Central YouTube channel with a major breaking news announcement. News you will not hear any, anywhere else first. We have the scoop. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be back after this on the Central Riverhawk YouTube channel. Consolidated Energy Company is a local family-owned supplier of refined fuels and propane. For more than 30 years, they've supported local homeowners, farmers, and businesses in the Cooley region and beyond. Customers count on Consolidated Energy for reliable supply and service at competitive rates. Check out their programs created to meet your unique fuel and propane needs at ConsolidatedEnergyCo.com or call 608-782-3308. Welcome back to On Alaska. 3-0 your score after the first inning. Two hits and two errors. Allowed the Hilltoppers to score three runs. Not the way the Riverhawks wanted to start. The good news is they did load the bases in the first inning, so maybe they can get some more base runners here. Somebody can come up with that big hit. Going to have to tighten up the defense, though. Leading off for the Riverhawks to start the second inning is Dawson Lapick. He's at short today. Batting 250 on the year. Of course, brother to Dylan Lapick. Dylan, I wonder if Dylan's tuned in today. I bet he is. And it sounds like we have a frozen screen. So I will work on fixing that. Don't know why it's frozen. We do still have audio. So bear with me here. O2 is the count. I don't know why we're getting frozen screen. It's happened a couple times now to us when we're out on the road, and I don't know what the issue is, but we're working to get it up. I promise you, technical difficulties here. Lapic takes a ball. Lapic follows one off. Not sure what the issue is here, why we don't have video. It shows that we should have video, but it shows you guys a frozen screen. I'll keep working on here. This one is low for a ball. If Dylan is watching, he's mad right now because he wants to watch Dawson. Lapica ground ball to short. Shortstop picks up, throws over to first in time. Next. The River Hawks, number 14, Luke Hansen. And we're still working on our video issues here, so I apologize for that. So I might need to close off the screen and restart. We're still getting the graphics going. We just can't get video going for some reason. So bear with me here. One one is the count to Luke Hansen. score bug is live so you can follow along that way as I continue to work on this 
video here. Next step for the River Hawks, number two. Hanson strikes out looking or swinging? Struck out looking. Because we have no video at all right now. Why? Hey. hey. We're live. All right. Apologize for that. So you missed a ground out by Lapic to short and a strikeout looking by Hansen, and that brings up Derek Pangier. Not sure why he does that. Got to figure that out. Doesn't do it in the gym. It's only when we're out. Pangier down on one, two outs here quickly in the top of the second inning. Trainer with the pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back. And Pangier quickly down 0-2. Pangier batting 667 on the year. Had a big day at Sparta. I think he had three hits at Sparta. Followed that up with a one for three performance on Monday. Trainer of the pitch. This one outside and low for ball one. Nice to have a high average guy in that nine spot. Turn it back over to the top of the order. Pangier certainly been doing that for the River Hawks early on in the year. Trainer the pitch. This one is in the dirt, and that evens the count of twos. Try to keep an eye on that stream so it doesn't freeze up on you again. Two-two the count. Two outs here in the top of the second. Trainer with the pitch. This one is swung on and a base hit for Derek Pangier. Continues his hot start to the year. A single to right field. Got my rights and left figured out. I was re-watching the softball game from the other night, and I was in the first inning confused on which way was right and which way was left. I was looking at it from center field, so that had me all mixed up. That one was definitely to right field. And that brings up Zach George. Zach George flew out to center in his first at bat. Two outs here, runner on first. Pangier able to get there via the single. George checks his swing on a high pitch. Ball one. Get something going here, maybe for the middle of the order. Do a little two-out damage. Trainer delivers. This one's popped up. It's going to be tough with the wind, but the right fielder, plenty of time to get underneath it and makes the catch. And the side is retired. F9 on the put out for George. So the Riverhawks get a single, leave them stranded. And after one and a half, the score is three to zero. Send it to commercial. We'll be back right after this with the bottom of the second inning. You're listening to the Central YouTube channel. This Central Riverhawk sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Munson Realty, a locally family-owned professional property management company serving the La Crosse area since 1988. Looking for a place to rent? Contact Munson Realty at 608-785-7187 or online at MunsonRealtyLAX.com. And Team Wireless, La Crosse's hometown Verizon store. They are a proud sponsor of the Central Riverhawks. Find Team Wireless in the Three Rivers Plaza on Copeland Avenue. Go Riverhawks! Welcome back to Onalaska. 3-0 your score through an inning and a half. Just getting ready to start the bottom of the second inning. Going to be important for the Riverhawks to hold the Hilltoppers right where they're at. River Rocks have some fight in them. We saw that on Monday. They were able to battle back in that game, but you can't let it get too far out of hand here. Hilltoppers will go 8-9-1 in the order. Ian Cole. Cole, who had two, two hits. He was two for two on Monday. Will lead off. Landon Hubert was 0 for 1, but walked three times. So between Cole and Hubert, 8-9 batters on the base pass a lot. And that allowed the top of the order to bring them in. So it's going to be important for the Riverhawks to be able to retire the side, or at least the lower end of the lineup here for the Hilltoppers. Cole, the sophomore. Zinnaker, the guy who ended the last inning, and Cole, the only two underclassmen on this Hilltopper team. First one is high for ball. 
one and all the count. Graham's here with the pitch. This one is in there for a strike. Evens the count at one and one. Let's see if the River Rocks can tighten up their defense here a little bit. Graham's here the pitch. Ground ball. Hanson at first. Had it hit his glove. Plenty of time, though, to stick with it. Steps on first, and Cole is retired. 3U on the putout for... Ian Cole, and that'll bring up senior Landon Hubert, the shortstop today for the Hilltoppers. Saw Hubert make a couple nice plays already at shortstop. Rams here with the pitch. This one is in there for a strike. Rams here continuing the trend of getting ahead of batters early. Ramsier the pitch. This one is swung on and fouled back. And Ramsier quickly up 0-2. Excited for the big announcement tomorrow, the breaking news? I'm excited for it. Noon? People have been asking me all day long after they saw it on Twitter last night what it is. I'm not telling. I'm not telling. It's breaking news. If I told you, it wouldn't be breaking when it came out. Here's a ground ball. Lapic fields. Throws over to first in time. And Hubert is retired. 6-3 on the putout. But it is, it is an exclusive. You won't hear it anywhere else. Brings up Xavier Lawrence. Lawrence singled in his first at bat in the first inning. Rams ear sets and delivers. This one is high for a ball. I think we might even get Joel to come over for our breaking news. He's talking about coming over for it. That's how big it is. Get him to do something in the spring. That's big. Ball on the outside, 2-0. Rams here the pitch. This one in bounces before the plate. 3 0 now. Three-o count to the Hilltopper leadoff batter. Rams here sets and delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Three and one now the count. Ramsier sets, delivers. This one is in there. And Ramsier works it back to a full count. Ramsier sets and delivers. Just a bit low, and you'll lose Lawrence. Lawrence reaches on the walk. Brings out Gilhausen. Reached on an air in his first at bat. So once again, the Hilltoppers get speed on the base paths. Gonna have to watch Lawrence. There he goes. Alvarado bobbled the ball now, fires it, and probably shouldn't have. But Pangier again able to back up. Once he bobbled the ball with Lawrence, you have no chance of getting them. At that point, you just got to eat it. And there was two outs and nobody on, and now all of a sudden the Hilltoppers have a runner in scoring position. That's what speed can do for you. Pitch, I believe, was a ball. It's not up on the scoreboard yet, but I believe it was a ball. There goes Lawrence again, and that's going to cause Lapic to be at the base and not in position, and that's going to score a run. RBI single for Carter Gilhausen. Lawrence was off on the first move from Ramsier. He was heading to third before Ramsier even got rid of the ball. And as a result, the defense had to shift, and that left the shortstop position wide open. 
give Gilhausen credit for finding that opening and driving in the run, and that'll bring up Caden Kokeisel. He also reached on an air in his first at bat. Ramsey in there with a strike. 4 nothing now in favor of the Hilltoppers. Ramsey sets and delivers. Gillowson takes off. Ground ball right at George at second, who was running over to cover the base. George able to handle a shortstop, the short hop. There we go. And get over to the base to retire Gilhausen. For you on the putout for Cole Keisel. And that's the end of the second inning. One run on one hit. A stolen base for Lawrence. Ended up being huge as it allowed them to get across a run. We'll send it to commercial. We'll be back after this on the Central YouTube channel. The mission of the La Crosse Central Booster Club is to raise money to support the sports teams and student activity groups here at Central High School. To do that, the Booster Club runs a school store, the can collection, sells student tiles, and organizes fundraisers. 100% of our profits go right back to the students. In just the past year, the Booster Club has raised over $25,000 and gave it all back to our student teams and activities in the form of uniforms, equipment, and student scholarships. Every year, we give out two $1,000 scholarships to seniors. We are always looking for more parents to join us. Any central parent can join the Booster Club. In addition, anyone can donate money to the Booster Club in support of our mission. Please contact us today if you are interested. Welcome back to On Alaska. 4 nothing. your score as we get ready to start the third inning. On Alaska with the lead. Done a lot of damage on the bases. Took advantage of some central errors. And then with their speed, able to get the defense to have to move around a little bit. And that just puts pressure on that infield. And they were able to scratch across a run there in the bottom of the second. Riverhawks at the top of their order here. Two batter, Jude Alvarado, will lead off. He has a single. Got a single in his first at bat. Made it all the way to third before he was stranded. So we'll see if Jude can get on again here for these Riverhawks. Be back live on Saturday, doubleheader, baseball doubleheader, starting at 11 o'clock, first pitch. We'll be live from UWL as the Hilltoppers will be hosting the Eau Claire Memorial Old Abes as trainer starts Alvarado off with a strike. I believe it was a strike. Trainer sets and delivers. Off-speed pitch off the outside corner. One and one now, I believe, is the count. Might just be video for Saturday's doubleheader, depending on what happens with the PA down there, if there's somebody to run the PA or not. This one is a strike. One and two now, the count. Scoreboard says two and one, but it is one and two. I saw the umpire signal it. Trainer's pitch. Swung on. It's a slow roller to third base. Going to be a tough play. Alvarado hustling down the line, and he beats out the throw. Infield single for Jude Alvarado. It was a tough play. Up next for the Riverhawks. Number 10, Grayson Pierzina made a good effort on it. But Alvarado running hard down the line, able to beat out the infield single. And that'll bring up Grayson Vienendahl. Walked in his first at bat. Alvarado on first. The trainer of the pitch is outside for a ball. Even in the hit column, 3-3. Three, three. Not in the run column. Onalaska, 4 nothing lead. Two of those three hits for the Riverhawks from Jude Alvarado. This one swung on and followed back off the roof of the garage. How about Jude Alvarado saying he won't do an interview with me this year? He felt I jinxed him last year after we interviewed him after the home run at Eau Claire. He, he thinks I put a hex on him. He's not going to join the broadcast. Not happy about that. This pitch is high, 2-1. and one. Maybe after the season. Maybe we'll try and get him after the season. I don't want to mess anything up, especially right now. He's two for two today. Trainer's 
Trainer's pitch swung on and fouled straight back. Vienendahl right on it. Sends it into the backstop, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Two, two count, no outs. Alvarado on first. Trainer the pitch. This one is high and outside, and it's a full count now to Grayson Vienendahl. Trainer sets and delivers. This one is swung on. It's out to center field, and it's going to be caught. Alvarado was all the way to second base, and that's going to be an easy double play for the Hilltoppers. I, was Alvarado stealing on that pitch? I don't know if he was stealing or just thought it was going to get down. But he has retired 8-3. Vienendahl retired F-8. And that's a tough play there as you go from no outs and, and a runner on to two outs and nobody on. Brings up Ramsier, who grounded out to third base. In his first at bat, trainer with the pitch. Swung on, ground ball, foul down the third base line. Wonder if Alvarado just thought that was going to drop. It was kind of a line drive, but there was plenty of air underneath it. To give Gilhausen, who has... A lot of speed, able to get over there. Ground ball to short. Hubert Fields throws over to first. And it ends up being a quick inning for the Riverhawks. 6-3 on the putout for Ramsier. Riverhawks go quietly in the top of the third. We'll be back after this. You're listening to the Central YouTube channel. The Lacrosse Central Basketball Association is dedicated to developing the basketball skills and character of young athletes who will attend Central High School please check out our website, lcbahoops.org, for more information about our year-round basketball offerings. And welcome back to On Alaska. 4-0 to zero your score. The Hilltoppers scored, I think, I think they scored in the last five innings on Monday, and now have scored in the first two innings, so that's seven innings where the River Hawks have been un unable to get out of the inning without, without allowing a run to score. That's not good. Got to turn that trend around. 4-5-6 for the Hilltoppers. Perzina, who had an RBI single in the first inning. Kuhn, who struck out. And Brody Mitchell, who had an RBI ground out in the first inning. Let's see if the River Hawks can find a way to get a zero up on the board here. Hilltoppers have a nice team. Speed, power. They're going to be contending top of the standings for the Mississippi Valley Conference. Riverhawks in a little different place right now. A little bit of a rebuild, a new head coach. Lots of moving parts, young players. Only two seniors. In the lineup, Zach George at second, and Garrett Vandezan in right, and Vandezan gets a DH. So when you look at the hitting lineup for the River Rocks, only one senior. Caden Pierzina steps in. Ramsier delivers. Pierzina takes one inside for ball one. here again. This time too low and it's 2-0 to Pierzina. Once again, got to thank Onalaska High School for allowing us to broadcast games. Always take care of us. Remember doing the hockey games. Here's a ground ball from Pierzina. It's going to be a tough play and unable to be fielded as he was going to have to get rid of it quick. That was Schulze charging in. Probably almost had to bare hand that one. Infield single for Pierzina. And once again, the Hilltoppers have a runner aboard. This is Brady Kuhn. Kuhn with an RBI single in his first at bat. 
Ramsier checks on Pierzine over at first. Ramsier set and delivers. Pitch is fouled back and out of play. 0-1. If we do have audio on Saturday for the doubleheader, former coach Joe Branson will be joining the broadcast. I'm excited for that. So hopefully there's a PA guy there on Saturday, so I don't have to do that, and I can join you on the broadcast. Rams here, the pitch. Swung on, ground ball, sharply hit the second. George over to Lapic for one, and that's all they'll get. Get the lead out. Four, six. On the put out of Pierzina at second. Fielder's choice for Brady Kuhn. And that'll bring up Brody Mitchell, who had an RBI ground out in his first at bat. One out here. Let's see if Kuhn is looking to run. Big lead over at first. Takes another hop. Ramsier delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Oh, one the count. Ramsey here. Quick check over to first base. Kuhn back in time. Ramsey here again will check on Kuhn over at first. Kuhn back. Kuhn is getting a very aggressive lead. Definitely has Ramsey's attention. Delivers. This one swung on and missed. And the count is 0 2. One out here. Top of the, excuse me, bottom of the third inning. Ramsier steps off to chase Kuhn back. Kuhn on his way, ground ball right at third base. Right between the third base and the shortstop. That's a base hit for Mitchell. Once again, we see the Hilltoppers with the hit and run, and once again it works to perfection as Mitchell able to squeeze one just past the third baseman. Schulze gave it a good effort. Unable to get down on it, and now runners on first and second. With only one out. Brings up Carson Zinnaker, grounded out to shortstop in his first at bat. Ramsier delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Oh, one the count. Ramsier Jr. Gives Kuhn a look at second, now delivers. This is a ground ball to the right side of the field. Van de Zan fields, he'll throw home. Throw is not going to be in time, and another run for the Hilltoppers. Hansen quickly ran over to cover the bag. Probably should have tried to field the ball, although that's kind of in no man's land. RBI single for Carson Zinnaker. And yet another inning where the Hilltopper is able to score. Make that eight innings in a row where they've scored against the Riverhawks going back to last Monday. Cole step in. Grounded out to the first baseman in his first up at. RBI, RBI opportunity here for Cole. Grabs here the pitch. In there for a strike. So you're continuing the trend of getting ahead of batters and getting ground balls. Don Alaska just doing a good job of hitting them where they ain't. That's the name of the game. Grabs here, delivers. This one is high for ball one. One and one the count.
Ramsey are set and delivers. Square to bunt. Pulls back and the pitch is outside for a ball, two and one. Cole was two for two on Monday, 0 for one here today. Sophomore for the Hilltoppers. Ramsey are set. And the pitch. Fouled back in out of play off the roof of the garage. Evens the count at two and two. Busy week for you next week, too. I was looking at that. We have baseball on Monday. Aquinas. That'll be at Copeland Park. That might be video only, too. Girls soccer on Tuesday night at Sparta. Excited to cover them for the first time this season. Cole follows this one off. And the count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Soccer has a big game tonight against Onalaska. Two Titans in the Mississippi Valley Conference. Problem is that game's at field for kids. We can't cover those games. If it was anywhere the press box, that's where we would be tonight. Grabs here's pitch inside for a ball. Central soccer team beat on or Aquinas a couple days ago. Kate Heiderscheidt with the hat trick. Somebody else had a hat trick too. Elliot Dale maybe. It's a good soccer team. Excited to see them Tuesday night. Cole, line drive to right field. Van de Zandt has to play it on a hop. He'll throw home. Throw will not be in time. It's going to be cut off by, oh, they actually held the runner. Wow, I'm surprised that happened. The throw was actually cut off. I think Ian Cole's surprised that happened, too, because that cost him an RBI. But that will load the bases. For the Hilltoppers, still only one out here. And that will bring up Landon Hubert, grounded out to shortstop in his first at bat. Coach Grush will come out and talk to the infield here to figure out how they're going to try to defend this bases loaded one out situation. Plan on stopping at that soccer game on the way home today. See what's going on. Hopefully favors the River Hawks. Hat Trick Kate, that was her name, nicknames this week at the HSA. Hat Trick Kate. Good soccer player. Of course, going to UWL next year. To that already terrific soccer program that they have. Talk about the rich getting richer. Landon Hubert, the shortstop, with bases loaded and one out. Ramsier pitches. This one is in there for a strike. And Ramsier's ahead 0-1. River Rocks need something good to happen here. Need a positive play. They have the corners in. The middle infield is back, looking to try and turn two. Do not want to turn it over to the top of the order. With this many runners on board. Swung on and missed on a high fastball. And it's 0-2. Mitchell on third, Zinnaker on second, Cole on first, and Landon Hubert. Already with a 5 nothing lead for the Hilltoppers, looking to add to it. Ramsier delivers. Outside for ball one. Ramsier sets and delivers. This one swung on. It's a fly ball to center field. Pange, you're going to have to come way in on it. Instead, it'll be... Instead, it's going to be taken by the left fielder. Landon Smith able to come across, and it's a good thing because I don't think Pangier was going to get it. It is a sack fly for Hubert as Mitchell tagged up and scored. 
sack fly. F7 for Hubert. Give him credit for the RBI. Two outs now, first and second, and Onalaska turns it back over to the top of the order in the form of Xavier Lawrence. Lawrence, one for one today. Single in the first inning, walked in the second. Runners on first and second form now. Get back to the speedy part of that lineup. This one is in there for a strike. 6-0 your score here. Riverhawks in the danger zone. Ramsier delivers. Ground ball right back at Ramsier. He fields it cleanly, throws the ball over to first, and that'll get him out of the inning. 1-3 on the putout for Xavier Lawrence. But the Hilltoppers add two more. 6-0 after three. And the Riverhawks are going to have to get the offense going here, try and rally again against these Hilltoppers. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Central YouTube channel. The Lacrosse Central Alumni Association is a proud sponsor of the Central YouTube channel. The Central Alumni Association meets once a month with the main mission of providing scholarships to Central High School seniors so they can continue their academic pursuits. Last year, the Alumni Association awarded $63,000 in scholarships to 66 deserving Central students. For information on how to join the Alumni Association or donate, see our page on Facebook. And welcome back to Alaska. How about my dad asking what the big announcement is? I'm not telling. I'm not telling. Okay, nobody gets to hear this. You can find out at noon tomorrow on the YouTube channel. Everybody trying to get insider information. My lips are sealed on this. Can't leak breaking news. But I'm excited about it. It's going to be a good one. So make sure you tune in noon tomorrow. And hear that news first. And live. Going to be an exciting day. 6 nothing your score as we head to the fourth inning. River Rock's got to get something going here. Offense has been you know, they threatened in the first inning. But since that, um, nothing going. Had a base runner in the second. Who was stranded on first. One, two, three. Well, they had a hit in the third inning, but Alvarado was doubled off. So really a one, two, three inning in the third. Riverhawks need to get something going. It'll be Landon Smith to lead off. He walked in his first at bat, comes in batting 375 on the young season. This is going to be a team, too, that gets better as the season goes on. When you you know, we talked about that with the softball team on Tuesday. Young team, they just need experience. You would assume that they'll get better as the season wears on and hopefully be playing their best baseball at the end of the year. Trainer with the pitch. This one is in there for a strike. key for Coach Grush, and this is as hard as a new head coach, but the key for him is going to be keeping the morale high and keeping their spirits up. They open. This one is on the outside for ball. They open, obviously, with Sparta, but then two games against Onalaska and two games against Aquinas to start the conference season. That's a tough slate of games for a really young team. And so depending on how this weekend goes, you could, you know, I don't know what Eau Claire Memorial has, but you could conceivably be one and five, one and six at this point next week. And how do you keep those young guys motivated and focused? Here's a line drive, but right at the center fielder. Good contact there for Landon Smith, but to the wrong area. As Gilhausen able to field it, and there's one away here in the top of the fourth inning. Aiden Schultz, he steps in. He grounded out to third base in the first inning. Trainer starts him off with a strike. So that'll be the challenge for Coach Grush, and that's not easy. That's why I'm up here and he's down there. 
He'll figure it out. This one is low, one and one. Central lost a lot of seniors last year to graduation. A lot of baseball players. This one high and outside, four ball two. And when that happens, there's going to be some growing pains with the young team. And we're kind of seeing that in real time right now. Trainer sets and delivers. This one is low. And three and one. Hitters count now for Aiden Schulze. Schulze only a sophomore. Swung on out to right field. That's going to be caught as it just was hung up long enough. Another one with good contact. But right at Ian Cole out and right. He only had to take about two steps in. River Rock's getting good swings right now. Just not able to cash them in yet. Brings up Dawson Lapick. I'm checking to make sure the video's not frozen because if Dylan's watching, he's mad at me right now. we got to make it up to him. Lapick with a high fly ball to the catcher who squeezes it and makes the catch. First pitch out for Lapick on the F2, and that'll end a 1-2-3 inning, the second one in a row for the Hilltoppers as they're getting into a little bit of a groove. And we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll be back after this. You're watching the Central YouTube channel. Welcome back to Alaska as we start the bottom of the fourth inning. 8-9, excuse me, not 8-9. How about 2-3-4 for the Hilltoppers? Starts with Carter Gilhausen. Gilhausen 1-4-2 today, reached on near in the first inning and an RBI single in the second inning. Gilhausen, good baseball player, good football player too, gets lots of speed. The Rocks don't want to see him on the base paths. Rams here with the pitch. This one is outside for ball one. Rams here with the pitch. This one is in the dirt. 2-0 now the count to Gilhausen. Wind picking up again. Thought it might rain today, so we'll take just wind. Let's get the game in. Rams here with the pitch. Ground ball goes off a home plate and then Bounces foul down the first baseline. Even on a ball like that, Gilhausen is going to be tough to get out. He gets out of the box so quickly and down the line. We saw that in the first inning, the, the ground ball to Zach George. Kept it in front of him. But by the time he picked up and threw it to first, Gilhausen had beat it out. This one is low, and 3-1 and one certainly do not want to walk Gilhausen. So we'll see if Ramsier can come back with a couple strikes here. Ramsier takes a deep breath, sets and delivers. This one is high, and Gilhausen draws the leadoff walk. Not ideal for the Riverhawks here, as that'll bring up Caden Kolkheisel. Kolkheisel 0 for 2, reached on an air in the first inning, and grounded out to second in the second inning. Gilhausen with speed on first. 
And Ramsey will check on him. Gilhausen back. Bottom of the fourth inning, 6-0 in favor of the Yonalaska Hilltoppers. They lead the hit column 6-3. Gilhausen stays. The pitch is in there for a strike. And it's 0-1. are set and delivers here's a fly ball out to right field Van de Zand turns it around a couple ways now not able to make the catch he got turned around twice now you're going to see speed flying around the bases as Kohlkaisel will end up at second and Gilhausen ends up at third give Kohlkaisel credit for the double new Van Zand was in trouble. Right? Remember the wind is blowing strong left to right on your screen. And as soon as I saw him drop the wrong shoulder, I knew we were in big trouble with that one. Unable to get to it. Ball was really swirling around, but that leaves second and third. Nobody out now for the Hilltoppers. This is Pierzina. Pierzina, two for two today, two singles. Single here would give him a couple RBIs. One zero the count. Rams here with the pitch. Outside for ball two. Two and zero. Sixty one pitches for Rams here so far. Rams here gives the runners a check and now delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Two and one the count. And Pierzino will call time. Two one count here to Pierzino. The senior, third baseman. And the four batter for the Hilltoppers. Rams here with the pitch. In there for a strike. Evens the count at two and two. Here sets and delivers. Ground ball to third base. The throw's going to come home. The throw's high. The runner is safe. And now the runner from first is going to go to second. Ramsey will throw to second. They'll get the out at second, maybe. Now they're going to say Zach George missed the tag as Pierzino was able to avoid the tag. Did a nice job dancing around. George had the ball. Two runs come in and score. Give Pierzina a fielder's choice on the ground ball to third. And the RBI. Brings up Brady Kuhn. 1 and 0 the count. Ground ball. Lapic has it at short. He's going to have to throw it all across the diamond. Not going to be there in time. Ball gets past Hanson. Now a runner's coming home. We're going to have a play at the plate. The throw is in time, and he is out. Pierzina tagged out. Luke Hanson with a nice job gathering the ball and getting Pierzina at the plate. 1 2 on the put out. Give a single to Kuhn, who ends up at first. Nice job there by Luke Hansen to stick with it. Got up, made a good throw home. Jude able to apply the tag. And so the first out at home plate for the Hilltoppers. Here's a fly ball down the right side. Out of play. Oh, 
All one the count. Ramsey pitch he is in there for a strike, 0 and 2. Eight zero your score here, bottom of the fourth inning. In favor of Alaska, one out with a runner on first. Ramsey the pitch. Ground ball. Scholze will field at third. He'll throw across a diamond. Hansen with a nice scoop at first. That was not an easy play. Luke Hansen able to scoop a couple nice plays now by Luke Hansen this inning. Kuhn goes over to second. Mitchell out on the 5-3. That's the second out of the inning. And that brings up Carson Zinnaker. Here sets and delivers. Check swing held off by Zinnaker. It's a ball, one and all. Pitch is low and in the dirt, two oh. Sets and delivers. Ground ball back to Ramsier. Fields a clean. Throw on to first is true, and that'll end the inning. 1 3 on the putout. Two more runs, though, for the Hilltoppers. Extends that scoring inning, scoring in an inning streak now to nine as they've gone 3 1 2 2 in the first four innings. 8 0 your score. We'll pay some more bills. We'll be back right after this on the Central YouTube channel. Consolidated Energy Company is a local family-owned supplier of refined fuels and propane. For more than 30 years, they've supported local homeowners, farmers, and businesses in the Cooley region and beyond. Customers count on Consolidated Energy for reliable supply and service at competitive rates. Check out their programs created to meet your unique fuel and propane needs at ConsolidatedEnergyCo.com or call 608-782-3308. Welcome back to Onalaska. 8-0 is your score as we head to the top of the fifth inning. 8-9-1 coming up for the River Hawks. Luke Hansen, Derek Pangier, and Zach George scheduled to bat in this inning. Luke made a couple nice plays there defensively. The one gathering up the Bad throw and firing a guy out at home. That was a nice play. And then also the nice scoop over at first on a tough play. Now he gets a, jan a chance to do some damage with his bat. Nisa, don't you, know what, don't you want to know what the big announcement is? She's shaking her. She don't care. She's not going to play games with me. But I'll just tell you that she does. It's killing her right now. You can turn, tune in at noon and find out. Noon tomorrow. <laughs> if you're working, tell your boss you got to take a 15 minute break at noon. Something very important you got to watch. Luke Hansen to lead off. Trainer with the pitch. This one is in there for a strike. Trainer firing a three-hit shutout so far here against these Riverhawks. Trainer with the pitch. Swung on and missed by Hanson. And Hanson quickly down 0-2. Trainer on the 0-2 pitch. This one is high for ball one.
Trainer with the pitch. Swung on. Pop fly. Short stop. Calls everybody off. And Hubert makes the catch. F6 on the putoff for Luke Hansen. And that'll bring up Derek Pangier. Pangier, one for one today, had a base hit single in the second inning. Activity now for the Riverhawks in the bullpen. You can probably see it on the camera. Dexter Osborne warming up the pitcher. Dexter doesn't get a lot of notoriety, but important part of this team. Doing the small stuff like warming up pitchers. Not fun. Somebody has to do it. Pangier watches strike one, and it's one and one. Trying to see who's warming up, and I have no chance of seeing that. That is a long way away from me. Schulze, maybe. It looked like a 12, kind of. Pangier, ground ball. Hubert at short. Fields throws to first. Pangier hustling down the line, and they get him by half a step. 6-3 on the putout. And that turns it back over to the top of the order for Zach George. George 0 for 2 today. Fly out to center and a fly out to right. Trainer, long look in. Now sets and delivers. This one is inside for ball one. I thought it was a strike. That's why the umpire doesn't stand up here. Trainer delivers. This one, another fly ball. George getting underneath everything. This one to second base. A 1 2 3 inning once again for the Hilltoppers. Their third in a row as Trainer has settled in nicely. Eight zero, your score after four and a half. We'll be back after this. You're watching the Central YouTube channel. This Central Riverhawk Sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Munson Realty, a locally family-owned professional property management company serving the La Crosse area since 1988. Looking for a place to rent? Contact Munson Realty at 608-785-7187 or online at MunsonRealtyLAX.com. And Team Wireless, La Crosse's hometown Verizon store. They are a proud sponsor of the Central Riverhawks. Find Team Wireless in the Three Rivers Plaza on Copeland Avenue. Go Riverhawks! It was Aiden Scholze that was warming up in the bullpen, and he will relieve Ramsier here to start the bottom of the fifth inning. So end the line on Ramsier. Eight runs, only six of those are going to be earned, however, as two of those runs in the first inning were unearned. Actually, make it five. Oh, it'll be six earned runs. Six earned runs. Two unearned runs for Ramsier. Had one strikeout. And did not walk a batter. I take that back. He walked two batters. So Ramsier's day on the mound is done. Schulze will take over. Schulze came in at the end of the Sparta game. Closed the door, slammed the door on the Spartans. One, two, three inning in that seventh inning. And so he has one inning pitched, a 0.00 ERA. He'll look to keep that going. And he'll have to do it against the 8-9-1 batters for... The Hilltoppers, Ian Cole, will lead off. Unless we have some subs coming in, which we might. And we do. So James Vanderloop will bat for Ian Cole. Vanderloop, a senior. Senior outfielder. 
Schulze's pitch. High for ball one. Lander loop the lefty. Steps in. Schulze sets and delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Boy, Schulze's got a little zip on his pitches. Only a sophomore like to see that. Schulze delivers. Just misses the inside corner. And it's two and one. This one inside gets past Alvarado and the count runs to three and one. Three one count, Schulze sets and delivers. And that one's in there. for a strike, and it's a full count, three and two. Schulze sets, delivers. Fouled over our heads down the left field line, over the press box, and we'll do it again at three and two. Schulze sets and delivers. That one is in on the inside corner. And Schulze rings up James Vanderloop for the first out of the fifth inning. Carson Campbell will bat for Landon Hubert. Campbell, a sophomore. And Schulze starts him off with a swinging strike, 0-1. Schulze he getting the signs and delivers. Just a little low, one and one now the count. Schulze with the pitch. This one in the dirt, two and one now the count. It's supposed to get up to 70 degrees this weekend. Hopefully it's like that for the double header. People wear shorts, show off my white legs. It's been a long winter for my white legs. They need some sun. Swung on and missed. Two and two. Now to Carson Campbell. Pinch hitting here in the fifth inning. Chelsea the pitch. Ground ball. Foul down the third baseline. Nice play by the Onalaska coach. Spins and makes a nice throw. <laughs> coach Miles looks at the guys. That's how it's done right there. Absolutely. Schulze with the pitch. And a nice off-speed pitch. Gets Campbell on the swinging strike. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Aiden Schulze. And that'll bring up Joe Walters, a senior, who will bat for Xavier Lawrence. Xavier Lawrence, there we go. Joe Walters, senior utility player. And Schulze starts him off with a ball. Eight, what is it, nine innings in a row the Hilltoppers have scored? Five on Monday, four, the first four year. River Rocks with maybe a chance to end that bad streak. This one is a ball on the outside corner. Nisa says, why would you say that? Two O here, two Walters. Here is a fly ball out to right field. Van de Zand has a beat on it and is able to catch it right along the right field line. One, two, three inning for the River Hawks. F9 on the putout for Walters. 
and that ends that scoring streak, finally. And after five innings, the score, 8-0 in favor of Onalaska. We'll be back after this. You're watching the Central YouTube channel. The mission of the La Crosse Central Booster Club is to raise money to support the sports teams and student activity groups here at Central High School. To do that, the Booster Club runs a school store, the can collection, sells student tiles, and organizes fundraisers. 100% of our profits go right back to the students. In just the past year, the Booster Club has raised over $25,000 and gave it all back to our student teams and activities in the form of uniforms, equipment, and student scholarships. Every year, we give out two $1,000 scholarships to seniors. We are always looking for more parents to join us. Any central parent can join the Booster Club. In addition, anyone can donate money to the Booster Club in support of our mission. Please contact us today if you are interested. Welcome back to Alaska. 8-0 your score as we head to the top of the sixth inning. 2-3-4 for the Riverhawks. Alvarado, Vienendahl, and Ramsier scheduled to appear here. See if the Riverhawks can get something going here late. As the Hilltoppers have had three, one, two, three innings in a row. Last base runner allowed was a single by Alvarado in the third inning, and then he was doubled off. They loaded the bases in the first inning. Had an opportunity maybe to strike first. Unable to cash in, and it's been pretty much downhill since then. Alvarado looking to change that. Alvarado is two for two today. Two of the three hits for the Riverhawks. Sun has gone away, and it's starting to cloud over here a little bit. And with that, a drop in the temperature. Trainer with the pitch. This one in the dirt for ball one. Two Alvarado base hits and a Derek Pangier base hit, and that's it for the offense for the Riverhawks today. Trainer with the pitch. This one swung on and fouled back. One and one now to Alvarado. Anxious to see a ground ball down the third baseline, see if Coach Grush can make that play. Coach Grush, a good baseball player back in his day. Here's a line drive off the bat of Alvarado to center field. Gilhausen, a couple steps back, makes the play. And Alvarado's retired for the first time today, F8. And on Alaska. Probably going to have a pitching change here, maybe. Enjoying an 8 nothing lead, and they will. Great effort today by Owen Trainer. Final line on him, 5.1 innings. Three hits allowed, no runs. Struck out a batter. And walked a batter. Was really in, in control pretty much the whole game. Central had a chance early to attack and missed their opportunity, and trainer really settled in. Seth Kowalski, the senior, right-hander, warming up now. Looks like he's got a little zip on his fastball. Riverhawks got to be happy to see trainer getting yanked off the mound. Had trouble getting anything going against him. Appreciate you sticking with us. Sorry for the technical problems we had with the video earlier. Continue to try to figure out what the issue is with that. I don't know what's going on with that. It's happened to us a couple times. Remember the football game at Wanakee, it did that. Basketball game at Fox Valley Lutheran, it did that. Don't know what the issue is with that. I don't know why it freezes up like that. It's where you need Joel. He can step in and fix whatever's going on, or Arnold. Fortunately, it's just me up here. If I'm the one trying to troubleshoot, we're all in big trouble. Now pitching to the right topper, number seven, Seth 
Seth Kowalski now with one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Will face Grayson Vienendahl. Vienendahl, 0 for 1. Walked in his first at bat and flew out to center in his second at bat. Kowalski with the pitch at, in the dirt for ball one. Kowalski delivers. This one is outside for ball two. Gets past the catcher. And it's quickly 2-0 to Vienendahl. Kowalski with the pitch. This one low and outside. And 3-0. Kowalski yet to throw a strike here. Probably taken all the way on this as Central needs base runners. Kowalski delivers. And this one not close as Vienendahl draws a four-pitch walk. And that'll bring up Eric Ramsier. Ramsier 0 for 2. Ground out to third base and ground out to shortstop. Looking to get his first hit of the day. One out, runner on first for Ramsier. Kowalski replaced Trainer on the mound. This one is low for a ball. Five balls in a row now for Kowalski. Got to believe Central is going to stand there and watch until he throws a strike. Take whatever he'll give you. Kowalski sets and delivers. There is a strike. And it's one and one. Kowalski gives Vienendahl a look over at first. And now it delivers. Ground ball right back to Kowalski. Under his legs though. Ramsier running down the line. The throw was wide, but a good job there. by Pierzina, who's now playing first. I'm sorry. Oh, it's still Mitchell. Mitchell with a nice job coming off the bag, catching the ball, and able to apply the tag on Ramsier. Nice job by Pierzina to back up the pitcher as it went right under his legs. 5-3 on the putout for Ramsier. Two away. Fienendahl advances to second. That brings up Landon Smith, who is 0 for 1, the line out to center field. Back in the fourth inning. Kowalski the pitch. This one's in the dirt. Back throw. And Vienendahl back in time as the catcher got up and fired it down. Try to get the back pick. Vienendahl was aware. Kowalski delivers a strike, and it's 2-1 and one now to Landon Smith. Kowalski sets and delivers. Slow roller down the first baseline. Catcher gives it a look. It's going to stay foul, so he'll just touch it, and the count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. Two-two count to Landon Smith. Grayson Vienendahl on second. Kowalski delivers. Outside, and that'll run the count to full. Three-two count, two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Kowalski with the pitch. This one's in the dirt. That'll allow Vienendahl, as the ball gets past the catcher, to take third. Landon Smith walks for the second time today, and that'll bring a visit from the Alaska coaching staff. And we'll see if Kowalski stays or if that's going to be it for him today. Aiden Schulze will be up for the Riverhawks 0 for 2 today. 
ground ball to third base and a line out to right field. Kowalski been a little wild here. He's walked two of the three batters he's faced so far. They will leave Kowalski in. This coach just tries to settle him down a little bit. And that'll set up Aiden Schulze. Can't imagine the River Rock's going to run anything here on this first and third. With two outs, down by eight, it really does you no good. Unless you're just trying to generate some offense. Smith will stay. The swing by Schulze over the top, and it's 0-1. Kowalski sets and delivers. This one is low for ball one, one and one. Kowalski sets and delivers. This one is low for ball two, two and one, just missing. Low and maybe a little outside. Some base runners never know what can happen. Kowalski set the pitch. Here's a line drive down the right field line. That's going to be a fair ball. One run will score. Smith rounding second. Right fielder had some trouble with it. He'll fire it in. RBI double. Probably RBI single for Schulze with a air on the right fielder. Vienendahl is going to score, and the Riverhawks are on the board. Second and third now. We're going to go RBI single with an error on the right fielder. Second and third for Dawson Lappick. Lappick will watch strike one. Lappick 0 for 2. Grounded out to shortstop and flew out to the catcher. In his two at-bats. Base hit here would score two. Kowalski up, 0-1 on the count, delivers. This one off the outside corner, 1-1. One and one. Landon Smith on third, Schulze on second. Wienendahl came around to score. Lappick at the plate. This one is low, ball two, two and one. Kowalski with the pitch. Fouled away off the bat of Lappick, and that evens the count at two and two. Two and two count, two outs. Kowalski the pitch. Lappick swings and misses, goes down to a knee. And Kowalski gets out of the inning. One run in. One hit for the Riverhawks. Two walks. And they're on the board. It's 8-1 to one as we get ready to head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Central YouTube channel. The Lacrosse Central Basketball Association is dedicated to developing the basketball skills and character of young athletes who will attend Central High School. Please check out our website, lcbahoops.org for more information about our year-round basketball offerings. Welcome back to On Alaska. 8-1 to one your score on Alaska with the lead. The Rock's able to scratch across a run there. End the shutout at least. 2-3-4 coming up for the Hilltoppers. We'll see if they have any Pinch hitters are not going to have one to start as I see Carter Gilhausen getting ready in the on-deck circle. 
Gilhausen one for two today with a walk. Reached on an air. Been on base all three times. And with his speed, that's not what you want. He scored two runs. Schulze, who was able to get a 1-2-3 inning, last inning, takes a mound again, hoping to do the same. Had a rough day here for the Riverhawks. Offensively, having trouble getting anything going. Defensively, start out with two errors. They have played better defensively after that, but when you put yourself in a hole right away, it's hard to come back, especially against a good team like Onalaska. So Gilhausen to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. One of the better players in the area, Carter Gilhausen. Scholze with the pitch. This one is low for ball one. Gilhausen two for three in game one versus the Riverhawks. And one for two here in game two. Schulze with the pitch. This one is high. Alvarado goes up high to get it. 2-0 oh now the count. Schulze with the pitch. Swung on and missed a mighty cut from Gilhausen. 2-1 and one now the count. Schulze with the pitch. This one in the dirt. 3-1 now the count. Again, don't want to put these guys on. Once they get on, they're in motion, that's for sure. Schulze sets and delivers. This one is low, and Gilhausen will draw his second walk in a row. And Gilhausen has been on base all four plate appearances. That'll bring up Caden Kolkheisel, another great player. Two for four on Monday. One for three today. Reached on an air in the first. Had a double in the fourth inning. It was the fly ball to right field. The pitch is off the outside corner for ball one. Schulze sets and delivers this one on the inside corner, or off the inside corner, for a ball 2-0. and Gilhausen at first. Kokeisel up, takes a ball in the dirt, and that'll allow Gilhausen to move up to second base. Wild pitch. Puts a runner in scoring position for the Hilltoppers. Three all the count. Schulze delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Belt high. And it's three and one. Hitters count here for Caden Kokeisel. The pitch is high. Kokeisel draws a walk. Back to back walks here issued by Schulze. That brings up Caden Pierzina. Pierzina, two for three. Also been on base in every one of his plate appearances as he reached on a fielder's choice. Back in the fourth. Two RBIs also for Pierzina today. Number four batter for the Hilltoppers. Schulze sets and delivers. This one is in there for a strike. Oh, 
one the count. Solzy giving a long look to Gilhausen at second. Now we'll deliver. This one just a bit low. One and one. Schulze the pitch. This one misses low as well. Two and one now the count. Three one three runs for Ron Alaska would end this early. As it's eight to one. Schulze with the pitch. Swung on and missed. As Pierzino was swinging for the fences on that one. Two and two now the count. Schulze the pitch. Pierzino got jammed a little bit. It's going to be a tough play. Diving play by Lapic is not able to be made. The throw comes into third. Now it gets past the third baseman. All the runners will have to hold, though. Just hit it right in the right spot. Lapic tried to get out there. But just in no man's land, Pangira had no chance on it. And now the bases are loaded with no outs for Brady Kuhn. Kuhn is... One for two, to, well, excuse me, one for three today. Struck out in the first inning. Reached on fielder's choice in the third and had a single in the fourth. Bases loaded. Schulze starts Kuhn off with a pitch on the outside for ball one. Big run over at first base. If that guy comes around to score, this game will be over. Schulze with the pitch. This is inside. 2-0 now. Schulze sets and delivers. There's a fly ball, a back out of play. And it's two and one. Not sure that one was a strike. That was pretty low. Schulze getting a little bit of help from Kuhn there. Schulze with the pitch. This one is in there for a strike, two and two. So maybe it would have been a strike because that's about where it was. Two and two now the count. Schulze needs, Schulze needs a big pitch right here. Pitch swung on and fouled back. And the count remains at two and two. Schulze delivers. Swung on and missed, and a big strike out there for Aiden Schulze, the first out of the inning. As Kuhn goes down on strikes, that'll bring up Brody Mitchell. Mitchell one for three today with an RBI, and a single back in the third inning. And it's not Mitchell anyway, it's number nine. And number nine is Jack Smith, the junior. Pinch hitting for Mitchell in the spot. Fouls that one off. Count is even at ones. One out here, bases loaded, eight to one in favor of on Alaska. Schulze with the pitch. This one's in the dirt, gets past the glove of Alvarado. That's gonna allow Gilhausen to score. Pass ball, allows all the runners to move up. Second and third now, a run is in, 9-1. to one. And the game ender, ending run is out at second base in scoring position. 2-1 the count. Schulze sets, delivers. This one is high, 3-1 and one now. Schulze with the pitch. This one is in the dirt. He'll walk Jack Smith, the pinch hitter. And bases once again loaded. This time for Carson Zinnaker. 
Zinnaker 1 for 3 today. RBI single back in the third inning. Base hit. Could end it. Schulze with the pitch. This one is in the dirt for ball one. Schulze sets and delivers. This one way outside. Wild pitch is going to allow the run to score from third. That's Cole Keisel. And allow the runners to move up. Second and third now one out. And the game-ending run now 90 feet away. Two will count to Zinnaker. 10-1 the score. Rock's got to find a way to get out of this and get to the seventh. Schulze delivers a strike. Two and one now the count. Infield all the way in, trying to shut down that. Game ending run at third base. Schulze with the pitch. Misses on the inside corner. And it's three and one. Pitch. Swung on and missed. Full count now. Three and two. Schulze sets and delivers. Misses inside and that'll walk Zinnaker. Bases loaded once again. And Coach Grush is going to come out. They don't have any action in the bullpen, so I think it's just going to be to... Try to calm Schulze down. We are going to have a pitching change, it looks like. And Schulze will head out to left field. Move Smith over to center field, it looks like. And Derek Pangier comes in from center. And looks like he's going to try and go the rest of the way here. So it'll be Derek Pangier coming in. Tough spot here. Base is loaded. Only one out. And the game-ending run standing on third base. Infield will be all the way in. Pangier will have to do his warm-up pitches. As I, don't, I didn't see him warming up at all. That doesn't mean it didn't happen, but I did not see it at all. So. Of course, he's been playing all game, so should already be kind of warm. I'll start working on totals here so we don't have to go to so many commercials at the end of this for our post game. Appreciate you joining us here today as we continue our spring sports season. Baseball on Saturday, doubleheader. Soccer on Tuesday night, girls soccer. Baseball on Thursday. I don't know what we have next Friday. Got a softball in there somewhere coming up soon, so. Have ASL wiffle ball coming up in a couple weeks. Excited for that. That'll be played inside the, the Hackett, or excuse me, the Sutton Gym at Central. If you remember the soccer game that we got to cover, that was a lot of fun. So I'm excited to get back and cover the ASL team. Been having a pretty successful spring. I've been watching on Facebook, getting the results. Got some hitters on that team. So excited to see that in action. And Pangier is ready. He 
it'll be Vanderloop, I believe. Yes, it is. James Vanderloop, his second at-bat of the day.